is we know that Megan and Harry got married during this whole Rahu period. When you get married during a Rahu period, it can indicate an impulsive marriage as well. So this whole, this whole experience of him entering this conflict zone and moving and leaving the royal family might be a temporary thing, but it might do some permanent damage between him and his older brother. Prince Harry and Megxit. What's going on? Why are they moving to Canada now? And that's what I'm going to be talking to you using astrology today. I'm Thor Sandalwood, so let's take a journey. By the way, this reading is for entertainment purposes only. Okay. So I got Prince Harry's birth chart and I found it in my Kala software program. I also found that we have a birth time for Prince Harry in the astrological databases I've seen online and he has an A rating for his birth time. So it seems to be pretty, pretty strong birth time for him. So he's born September 15th, 1984 at 420 in the afternoon. And so right away we see that he is a Sagittarius and Sagittarius to me it's ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is known as the guru of the gods the guru of the devas whereas Venus is known as the guru of the demons and so it always it sometimes has this noble character of it and but also it can have a negative connotation of religious dogma however you know when I look at his chart we see that Jupiter is in his first house. And so Jupiter is in its Mula Tricona sign, which that means Jupiter's in its own house where it feels very comfortable. So I don't think we're gonna see Prince Harry as some sort of religious zealot or something like that. But he probably has strong principles and strong values which guide his life. The interesting thing I notice about his first house, which is his identity and who he is, is Jupiter is the Lord of his fourth house and the fourth house has to do with your homeland and where you come from your homeland your place of birth and obviously England is his birth birthplace so he strongly identified with his homeland and of course being royal family we would naturally assume that but really it, it really is part of his core being is that I am royal and I am from you know, United Kingdom and I'm part of this royal family. It really is core to Harry's being. And so that's why this whole Megxit situation with him stepping down from his higher uh, royal duties and moving, in, I guess Meghan and Harry are gonna spend most of their time in North America now. It somewhat is troubling for his core character that he really identifies himself with his homeland and with the royal family. Furthermore, when I look at his chart, I, I notice that the moon is in the fifth house. And what is the moon? The moon is your mother. And the moon is in the fifth house of Aries. And so what that shows me, fifth house is all about royal courts, royalty. And who was Harry's mom? Princess Diana. And she's so well known around the world. So he's really identified with this royal thing, but it also says his mother also indicates to me that his mother was very strict and very outspoken because I also see a uh, Saturn aspect to his moon there. So his mo mother might have been actually kind of strict on Harry and William, which is kind of interesting because if we can count seven houses from Saturn, which is in the 11th house, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we see that aspect on the moon. The seventh aspect from Saturn is not quite as strong as the third and the 10th aspect though. But you know, his mother might have been a little bit orthodox, more orthodox than people would imagine. So what I find interesting about this whole thing about him, you know, it was kind of a big shock of uh, what it was it a month ago, within the last month when they announced that they were gonna be stepping down from their royal duties. And you know, just recently within the last couple months, we had the scandal with Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein, and then Prince Andrew kind of has been exiled in, so to speak, not fully exiled, but in a matter of speaking, I think that we're gonna see Prince Andrew kind of fade more from the public eye. And then now there's this royal drama of Prince Harry deciding to, to up and leave, which makes it, you know, quite interesting to study all this situation because 
it's happening all in this time of identity or of this royal family kind of in turmoil. And what also kind of makes me think that this royal family is in turmoil is I see, we see that Prince Harry is in the Rahu Mahadasha. And he started Rahu Mahadasha back in, and then we can go see, back in March of 2007. Now remember, the Mahadashas are very long. They can go on for 20 years, like Venus Mahadasha is 20 years. And I think Rahu Mahadasha is like 17 or 18 years. I forget off the top of my head. So these Mahadashas are very long. So in currently, as of January 22nd, 2020, when I make this video, he's still in Rahu Mahadasha, that big period. And so when we look at his Rahu and we're going, okay, what's going on? Why is he announcing this big split from the royal family? We notice that his Rahu is in the sixth house. And the sixth house is all to do with conflict. It's all to do with accusations. It's all to do with debt. It's all to do with enemies and problems, even health problems. So Rahu is, all of us have a Rahu in our charts. And Rahu is that area of life where our souls don't have much experience. So if we look at Harry's chart, we see maybe he hasn't had a lot of past life experience with conflict being in conflict with people. And so when we see this split with the royal family, this is basically Prince Harry's sole urge to be in this conflict. And he's in Rahu Mahadasha, which even strengthens that urge. So we can also assume with Rahu being involved, because Rahu's known as the trickster. He's the trickster god, and he gets us in over our heads. Things that we, the, we might have some deep subconscious urge and then we do it and then we find out, oh my gosh, we're involved in some really, really deep things. So this, even though Prince Harry got up there and he said that he has been in talks for several months with this move, with Rahu being there and he's in Rahu Mahadasha, to me, it indicates that this is rather an impulsive move. So it could have been that Meghan and uh, Harry were in Canada a few months ago and it was just kind of like, you know, it'd be nice if we were here in Canada and we could just stay here and get, get be away from all that media problems in the UK. And so they just decide to, you know, in kind of a snap decision, well, why don't we do that? But it's going to cause all my pro this problems with my family. So Harry's really learning a lot about conflict management, conflict situations. The issue here, and I can look at his chart also to explain a little bit about this relationship that he has with his wife. Meghan Markle and we're going to go into that very shortly here. So I don't know just this whole issue of him making this impulsive decision. Uh, it, he's kind of in over his head. And then we if we want to look at because if we also want to look at the character of, of Rahu, we got to look at who is the Lord of Rahu. He, his Rahu's in the sixth house of Taurus. So that means Venus is Lord of, of Rahu. So it's Rahu's being influenced by Venus. And we see Venus is in the 10th house of Virgo, where it's debilitated. So his v Venus is not very intelligent, so to speak. Not very awake, very asleep. We can also look at Venus in Harry's chart to kind of get a, a very small snapshot of his wife, because Venus in a man's chart represents the first wife. So we see Venus is in the 10th house. That usually is public respect, public visibility, and all those things, but it's debilitated. So the wife might not be so awake because when we talk about planets being debilitated or exalted, it's awake or asleep. And what does awake or asleep mean in Vedic astrology? Awake means being enlightened, having knowledge, how to deal with certain situations. Asleep is kind of you're, you're not conscious. You're not making conscious choices. You're kind of just going with this internal program that you have. So we could say, Maybe, okay, we see Venus is debilitated. So that's usually not good. That's usually not a good sign. This doesn't mean the relationship with Megan is, is bad. We can look at other aspects. We also want to look at the seventh house. And the seventh house is Gemini. We can look at his the Lord. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Megan and Harry's marriage, okay? So what we want to do is we also want to look at the seventh house. Are there any negative aspects happening in the seventh house? Well, we see Jupiter is in the first house. It's aspecting the seventh house. So we know that there's a little bit of God's grace happening there. There's a little bit of wisdom and expansion happening within his marriage to Meghan Mar uh, Markle. 
However, there is a negative aspect to that seventh house of Gemini. And it comes from his Mars being in the 12th house of Scorpio. Mars aspects the seventh house 100%, which means that this marriage is most likely has a lot of contentious arguments and there's a lot of fighting happening in this marriage. A lot of things probably that we don't see as the public. So there's a lot of arguing and it's because of this restless Mars energy. If you have two people that are very active, very um, outspoken in what they do, they tend to just fight. They, they tend to argue. So we see that there's a lot of this, this called, they call this Mangala Dosha. So it's a Mars Dosha. It means that this can be problematic to the marriage. The Jupiter aspect can help save that marriage, but that Mars aspect is going to cause a lot, cause a lot of, of disputes in the marriage. We also can look at seven houses from the moon to look at his emotional side to his marriage. If we count seven houses from his moon, it is the 11th house of Libra. However, you see Saturn is there. So what I tend to interpret this situation as, and we got Rahu in the sixth house, and I'm looking at this and we kind of have to look at it, put all these pieces of the puzzle together. This whole marriage has been, there's been some arguments. If we want to see what, what his wife sees as an enemy, we can count six houses from that 11th house, which shows the emotional, what are the enemies of this, of the wife, the spouse, okay? What does Meghan Markle see as an enemy to her? Okay, what does she see as adver adversarial to her incidents or her, what does she as adversarial to her interest? And it's the fourth house. What's the fourth house to Harry? His homeland. So we know Megan, she sees the United Kingdom or his homeland, which is not her homeland, is, is being contentious to her best interest. And so maybe the media attention, she feels that way. It doesn't mean that it's, you got to remember all this stuff in astrology is perceptions, viewpoints, how people are seeing things. Someone might actually look at the situation and say, Megan's being too sensitive about all this stuff. You know, she really didn't know what she was signing up for when she got married to Harry. But what I'm seeing is she views the, the homeland as somewhat hostile to her interest. There's arguments. There may have been an ultimatum, an ultimatum of, well, you better choose your family or me. Definitely that is, that is possible in this interpretation. You're, now it's like, okay, so we know that Megan's very, having a very contentious aspect here with the homeland, with the royal family, fourth house. The issue is, is why would Harry decide to go with Megan? And the reason is, is we see that. We see Saturn there, seven houses from the moon, which means that Harry feels a sense of obligation to his wife. He feels a sense of tradition. So Harry has that feeling of, I would almost say like when someone's raised in a traditional background and they feel that the institution of marriage is very important and they have the obligation and duty of honoring their spouse. So Harry has that feeling. And I can know because of that Saturn being there, he feels a lot of anxiety about this whole thing. This whole thing about leaving his homeland and moving to Canada and I guess sometimes visiting the US is very conflicted to him. He's feeling a lot of anxiety about this, very serious issue with him. I don't have Megan's chart to know how she's exactly feeling about this situation, but we know that she's feeling hostile about uh, Harry's homeland, okay? And by the way, if you guys want me to do a further detailed reading of Meghan Markle, also let me know in the comments below. So when we also look at Harry's chart, I mean, we see that he's also, you know, his homeland, the way he views his homeland is, you know, his homeland has been very good to him in many ways. I mean, we have Jupiter, which is in its own sign in his first house, homeland, he's royalty. Then we have that Venus aspect. His Venus is in the 10th house. And even though it's debilitated, it's still setting that aspect to his fourth house, which to me, when Venus aspects a house, it's like adding that pleasure, that, that, that money, that pleasure, kind of that Venus represents like worldly pleasures. Jupiter represents more like Dharma, growth, spiritual treasures, expansions, wisdom, and grace. But Venus is kind of more of that worldly, what, what most humans would think of as like a luxurious life. That's Venus. So Venus sending its little pleasure aspect ray to the fourth house. So Harry had it really good 
in his homeland. What do we want to do? What do we want to predict about the future? How is Harry going to feel in another country? Even though it's Canada, we still know it's, it's, it's away from his place of birth. And we know that Canada is considered part of the Commonwealth. But when I think of someone leaving their political boundaries of their homeland, we can think of them as this is a 12th house situation. 12th house is how an individual deals with foreign countries. And even though it's English speaking, it's still somewhat foreign. So if we look at his 12th house, we see Mar, we see two malefics there in Harry's 12th house. We see Mars there, which is contention, problems, wars. And I don't necessarily see that with Canada, like wars, but it can just be that he feels contention. Maybe the media is a little more crazy there, or there's more problems than he realized going to Canada or North America. So Mars and K2 being there doesn't make me feel like, oh, this is a great, his time in a foreign land is going to be a great time at all. Um, I would actually say the reverse. He probably would be better off in his homeland than in a foreign country. Now, some people's charts are the reverse. Some people's charts show that they do great in other countries versus their homeland, that they're just a pariah in their homeland and they need to move. We can also look at for someone's experience in a foreign country, we, we count 12 houses from their Lagnesia, when the Lagnesia is their first lord. Again, Jupiter is his Lagnesia, 12 houses, it happens to be the 12th house in his chart. Again, Mars and K2 are there. So we see K2 there, that sense of apathy, that sense of detachment, that sense of he feels like he doesn't have any roots in this place where he's living. He doesn't have any connection with the people there. Uh, Mars there is a sense of anger. There's a sense of problems. Okay Now his Mars is in its own house. So it's pretty intelligent. So it might not be that there's actually Conflict wars going on or something like that, but it, sometimes it can just represent more conflicts You know because this can be a very difficult time for Harry. He's making the move. He did this big This takes a lot of courage for him He's making this move essentially to separate from the royal family Okay, so this could mean when he gets to Canada and things settle down, the honeymoon period ends, you know, with when Meghan and him settle down, that there may be some arguments about, you know, we kind of rushed into this thing and there's going to be maybe some arguments about, you know, what did we do? And maybe Harry will maybe think about this more. And there might be some arguments that, and, and every, every married couple or every, you know, every person that's been in a serious relationship knows that these things from the past, these decisions we make, the decision to move can definitely cause problems in the future. We tend to blame the other person. You know, why did we do this? This is a horrible decision. What I find interesting is we also see this issue with Prince William and Harry. And a lot of people said, is there contention happening with Prince William and Prince Harry? And my answer would be an overwhelming yes. There is contention happening. If we want to look at Harry's relationship to his older brother, all we need to do is look at the 11th house. The 11th house represents the older sibling. And just as the 11th house represents seven houses from the moon, which represents his emotional relationship with Megan, the 11th house from his first house is his older sibling, Prince William. And Saturn's there. So he has this feeling of obligation towards his older sibling, William. But this, what does this mean about Prince William? Prince William is, is without a doubt conservative. He's very much with tradition, the royal family. You're not gonna see Prince William make a decision to bounce out of the royal family anytime soon. He's all about tradition, supporting the family, supporting the queen. What this tells me, and usually when Saturn's in a house, this is a lifelong intractable problem. So whatever happens with Meghan and Harry, he's gonna have this, this somewhat weird relationship with his older brother, William. So let's say things don't work out for Harry in Canada, in North America, and they, they end up moving back to the United Kingdom. Prince William, in his mind, will be the guy that's like, I told you so, it, this was not gonna work. I told you so. And it definitely would be somewhat rubbed in Harry's face, that this didn't work, he made a bad decision. And you might see this judgment coming from Prince William. Probably won't happen in the media, 
but in their private lives, you, there's definitely this judgment from Prince William, who's going to be the future king of England. There is probably this feeling of Harry's living under the shadow of his brother, Prince William. And it's going to be an intractable problem throughout his life. I don't know if he's ever going to feel like William really just loves him and cares for him and respects him as his younger brother. There might be issues going. So that's what I'm predicting. There's going to be future issues regarding this. One troublesome issue I do see as far as Rahu being in the sixth house is we know that Megan and Harry got married during this whole Rahu period, which can also indicate even in 2018 when they got married, it can indicate an impulsive marriage as well. And Rahu being in the sixth house, sixth house also represents divorce. So by the end of Rahu Mahadasha, which Rahu Mahadasha will end in 2025, only five years from now, okay? He's gonna enter Jupiter. There's a good chance there could be a divorce because what happens when Jupiter comes online after Rahu Mahadasha ends and Jupiter comes online, the Jupiter Mahadasha, he's going to kind of like get his senses again and see everything that happened during Rahu Mahadasha. And he's going to be able to make better decisions from that point forward. And so, and Jupiter being his first Lord and his fourth Lord, I could see in that possibly in five years, he's going to be moving back to Britain. So this whole, this whole experience of him entering this conflict zone and moving and leaving the royal family might be a temporary thing, but it might do some permanent damage between him and his older brother. There's going to be problems. I can't necessarily predict for sure that there's going to be a divorce, but he's in a definite danger zone right now. Um, while he's in this Rahu period, he's in a danger zone. The only thing that might keep him through this whole thing is that yeah, he does have that Saturn obligation duty influencing his marriage, the seventh from the moon. He has Saturn influencing that house, which might might preserve the marriage. Uh, but I would say, you know, he's in a definite he's in a definite period where there could be a conflict, divorce. The, the Mars aspect to his seventh house can cause a divorce if it's not dealt with in the correct way. It doesn't have to cause divorce, but it can because there's just too much argumentation going on. In the marriage guys I did a pretty lengthy analysis on this let me know what you guys think what do you think about Megxit what do you think about Prince Harry Megan Prince William the Queen what do you think about the Queen comment down below let me know thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please like it and please subscribe to my channel for more analysis videos thank you so much for watching and bye bye